Hello everyone, and welcome to my Duel Today official news channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. When Sarah comes out of the guest bedroom, she finds Xander wearing a black t-shirt, and he's preparing haggis, which is mashed turnip and potato. He was going to bring her breakfast in bed, but he would definitely knock politely first. When she was in bed, he wouldn't dare to walk in. Sarah suggests slyly that he might have done it. Trip returns home from the hospital in a gloomy mood to find Wendy has left for Hong Kong tonight. With remorse, he tells her he can't accompany her since he believes Ava is connected to the drug trade in Salem. Wendy respects his desire to care for his family and recognizes that Ava needs him now more than ever. Trip inquires as to their implications. At the police station, Justin says that Tate's bail was revoked because the judge was persuaded by E.J. that Tate poses a flight risk due to the riches of his family. Tate asks what would happen to him when he interrupts his parents' panic attack. Tate would be sent in juvenile hall. But according to Justin, he will submit an appeal and look at other options first. Justin clarifies that's not how the system operates, but Alex still wants to throw money at the issue. A beaming E.J. strolls in. Brady gets restrained from lunging at the smarmy D.A. by Alex, Justin, and Rafe. While enjoying their coffee, Sarah and Xander are impressed by their daughter's recovery from her fever. Sarah's preparations for New Year's Eve were spoiled, and Xander apologizes. Sarah remembers their kiss at midnight. I wouldn't say that they were destroyed. Sarah puts her lips to her mouth, smiling, as Xander rushes to tend to a sobbing Victoria. Sarah has finished and is loving her Scottish breakfast when Xander and Victoria return. After a disagreement about how to pronounce the word scones, Sarah hopes Victoria will adopt Xander's accent. He adores everything about Sarah, so he hopes their daughter adopts her family style instead, complete with an American accent. Following a huge exchange of glances, Sarah prepares to bring Victoria home. EJ announces in the squad room that Tate will face adult charges and be housed in the local jail alongside other inmates. According to Justin, the law does not support such in terms of possession. EJ is aware of this. How about selling a lethal batch of medications that are killing children and almost killed his stepdaughter? How about manslaughter or attempted murder? Is he able to achieve that? Theresa asks. If the offense is appropriate, Justin says he can prosecute a kid as an adult. Alex understood they ought to have chosen a different attorney. When this youngster doesn't understand what he's talking about, Justin gets angry. Alex then charges E.J. with controlling the judge. Tate begs at him to halt, but he still approaches E.J. He begs his mother fervently not to allow them to put him in jail. Tripp offers they continue their long-distance romance from the flat but Wendy is aware that it will be too far away. Despite her deep affection for him, she doesn't think he will wait for her. Nor would he want her to wait on him. They burst into tears as they exclaim how amazing the other is. They recline on the couch after sharing a passionate kiss. Entering Xander's, Sarah jokes about taking a walk of shame while wearing her dress from New Year's Eve. Regardless of what she wears or doesn't wear, he finds her to be gorgeous. As they awkwardly strike up a conversation, Xander suggests that she move in permanently with our daughter. Sarah claims that she couldn't leave Maggie because of her worries. If she's just searching for an excuse to say no, Xander wonders. Sarah acknowledges this, citing the difficulties of cohabitation. Xander mentions the kiss they had. Xander acknowledges he's wanted to kiss her for a while, but she claims it was only an impulse move. She's also done so, Xander could tell. Like all of their kisses, she describes theirs as amazing, but she's afraid of moving too quickly and regretting falling head over heels in love with him once more. Xander assures her that they would only be co-parenting and that he would respect her personal space. Following the exchange of absurd boundary lists, Sarah says she's deemed to try. With joy, he hands her a set of keys. Tate confides in his parents in private at the station about his fear. Brady and Theresa promise to put up a fierce fight to establish his innocence. 
EJ comments nearby that Tate didn't dial 911 when he discovered Holly, which might have been the difference between her survival and death. Even though the drugs weren't his, Tate offers his heartfelt apologies, but EJ thinks it's too late. Theresa doesn't see a husband grieving the death of a child or a guy losing consciousness over his wife's pain when she looks into EJ's icy eyes. She just perceives hostility and resentment. After giving an officer instructions to change Tate, Rafe requests a quiet conversation with EJ. Theresa concurs with Alex that they need to have chosen a different attorney. Rafe asks EJ in the interrogation room, What the hell is wrong with you? While they discuss his behavior, Rafe asks EJ to consider Johnny when he was Tate's age. If someone were to treat him the way he is treating Tate, how would it make him feel? Tate then reappears in jail jeans and gives Theresa an embrace. Brady swears to get Tate home as quickly as they can, as Justin reassures him they will fight this. Rafe comes back to grab Tate. E.G. smugly thinks, We wouldn't want to keep your new cellmates waiting now, would we? Theresa refers to E.J. as a monster. As he gives his son a hug, Brady promises to move heaven and everything to free his son. Tate is led away in terror by Rafe after being handcuffed. This isn't finished, Brady assures E.J. Not by much, really. Trip is getting her car shortly. Wendy says as she and her partner organize their things at home. Though she believes it would be too difficult, Trip offers to drive her to the airport. Trip tucks a wooden Jenga block into her purse as she heads to change. Their grip is firm as she comes back. Before she goes, they confess their love to one another. Faces crumpled and tears streaming down their cheeks. Wendy and Trip lean against the door on either side. Watchers of the series could recall Janelle spending her Christmas without Cody in season 18. She was miserable to see the manner in which her significant other deserted her children during the celebration. Nonetheless, she was content and peaceful to enjoy the festival without any drama. Janelle's most recent Christmas update uncovered that she was so glad to commend the celebration with the children. Fans felt miserable to not see posts in the photos. Notwithstanding, she was partaking in her celebration with her number one individuals without Cody. My and her permanent separation was essentially nothing more than what I believe to be a delicate negotiation of our current situation. What our characters are like, and what we can provide for one another and what we can't. Cody Brown later made sense of that the genuine assessment of the relationship made them mindful of the need to push ahead without behaving like a couple. In any case, I think the acknowledgement of that has carried us to a spot where we can be companions once more, he added. The Attention Star additionally said that Robin and Mary are still close. His previous first spouse actually needs to come and see the children. We'll continuously have a relationship of what I trust is at any rate some benevolent companionship, he added. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.